Hello there, welcome back to episode 10 of Flank Drone. So today we're going to reach deeper into the depths of this wicked place. I have opened up a cavity which hosts a angelic creature that is uh, not on good terms with us. And well, last episode that door here was uh, sadly blocked by a piece of chain that was not removable, I took the liberty to delete that item via destroy command of DF hack, because at the end of the day I find it quite nonsensical that the dwarves are so afraid of the creature that they are unable to pull a rope off of the doorstep which would allow them to shut the door forevermore. That doesn't make sense to me, so I removed it. I hope you guys don't mind, because technically the un only other workaround would be to abandon this uh, pillar and not ever come again ever, ever anymore, and I don't like that. Especially as it really, as I really find, found it anticlimactic out of many reasons. I hope you guys understand. Now, we are going to go and get ourselves a fresh water supply together. That's one thing that I'm going to do. The other thing that I'm going to do here, wow, artifact mechanisms, I'm sorry. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is obviously we're going to dig our way deeper into the adamantine deeps because, well, we are making quite nice progress so far. I do count on my uh, human homies to provide me more material and yeah. On the other end, we're going to establish ourselves here, a nice little will that we're going to use to kickstart our own water supply. It's a little bit uh, iffy, it's not really ideal, but well, it's the best we can do for the time being. So, as a matter of fact, we could actually make this a ginormous cistern. Hmm, options so many of them. More people are arriving at the city, which is really, really good. I still haven't found time to set up more bedrooms. I beg the forgiveness. I really, really, uh, well, what can I say? I feel a little bur bit burnt out on the bedroom front, so let's maybe dig out a few of them every episode. <laughs> And we'll eventually get there. Like I keep saying, the good part is that your dwarfs are, as a matter of fact, quite robust and willing to hold out without a bedroom for quite some time before they really grow grumpy because of that. But eventually, it is for me a, a, a matter of good manners to give everybody a room to live in. It's just, just as it should be. But as you see there, Breaking up these tasks into many little tasks really helps me keeping things manageable. I don't know if you suffer sometimes from stuff like that, but I certainly do, especially with bigger projects on the horizon. I often have the problem that things look too big to manage, and uh, yeah, that's my usual go-to strategy. Break it up into little pieces that look manageable. Anyways, so we, uh, we are getting somewhere here, I can see that, and there's a petition running. Well, obviously, the Craft Dwarfs Guild Hall has been established. The Company of Hames, whatever. Don't mind that they want to have that. We're going to give them a nice little compound. Well, where actually? So... There's all the bars here. Do we want to go here for them? Eh, I'll be, uh, I'll be going here that way. So here's going to be the guild hall. I know that this is going to limit my macro workshop, but uh, I really, really don't mind. If we need a new macro workshop, we can easily expand on that. So let's do this. As far as I see, I don't have a finished good stockpile yet. Gah. What is this place even? Anyways, so we are going to go and floor this place with some fine orthoclase so that this guild hall is living up to its name. And obviously we're accepting the quest. 
the skill hall requests give a nice chunk of uh, happiness among your people. And that's why I do that. There we go. Let's just slap some workshops in, and then we're good to go. So, panda people are, are somehow swarming into my fort, getting dinged down by my by my soldiers. I have no clue why these panda people are, are swarming into my place. I just do know that they just triggered all of my rock traps before they get stopped by my two fighters. Well, alright. Turns out that these two fighters here, being legendary and all, can tackle quite a substantial opposition. So, that being said... Call it a legendary fighter. Tobul, a legendary swords dwarf. Ah, yeah. Let's do that. So, Tobul already has a weapon. Just need a little bit of other gear for you. Let's do this. And there is an obvious advantage in our availability of macro workshops here. So we're, uh, we're going to make something like this. I love it when everything is so scarce and everything matters. It's such an interesting environment. So we're uh, obviously allowing shields out of all materials. What's that? All right. Obviously, we're coming. Uh, things are coming together here quite nicely. I think I am best off is if I am expanding the other areas of my apartment block situation here as well. That's something I really, really think I should do. Oh, whoops. So let's do a bit something like that. There's now plenty of workshops for demonstrations. And if ever necessary, we can hide some artworks below the ground there, so we can avoid all the happy jurist faces there. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of uh, carving out uh, the artworks everywhere, so that you have these uh, arty, artsy faces in the entirety of your, uh, of your room. Don't like the uh, visuals of that. So yeah, I've uh, come to the conclusion that we are going to expand here a little bit in terms of uh, art and space. There we go. This will free up some more living space for everybody, but I do see the uh, need for more timber here as well. The real cool part about uh, bringing up legendary fighters is that they are battle ready right from the get go. If you are training up people that have no military experience beforehand and mix them with very experienced soldiers, you have quickly the problem that they uh, quickly die because the experienced soldiers obviously uh, are holding up for themselves, whereas the new dudes, they just die quite quickly. So yeah. This is, uh, for me, a very, very appealing situation, in all honesty. Now let's do it like that, otherwise it looks weird. So, yeah. We only might have three fighters, but all three of them are legends, so that uh, surely weighs up their low numbers. Also, there are no waters that they could drown themselves in. It's another nice advantage. Alright, so that is another suite of bedrooms there we go seven more and here i'm kind of like messed up a little bit
There it goes. So for this area, let's just drop some floorings on the, or on the ground. And get these rooms serviceable as fast as we can. There's a couple, a couple of very, very grumpy dwarfs in our midst here. There we go. Almost there. Alright. It's quite a lot of work for them dudes, but... Uh, well, by now we are also a hundred people, so... That really is not that much of a big deal anymore. I like that. Okay, so I'm quite fond of the uh, possibility that we are getting this done now. Very sorry that I am recording this now after saying the last time that I meant to do this between the episodes. But I just keep forgetting. And uh, yeah, that led me to the point that I just needed to do that, obviously, whenever I have the thought get the idea probably all right so since our farms are in such a horrible condition we're very very bound to imports and foraging both things do matter very very much for us and obviously we should definitely alerts have butcher and a tanner up here So, thieves. Deers are fighting. So, obviously, wild animals love to accidentally get themselves into my trap corridor. Good job, you poor animals. Dang it. Anyways. So that place is now ready to serve, I'd say. So. Let's do this. Okay. I still intend to transport the water somewhere else. I think we can safely delete that job. Because I... I don't want this chamber here to be my main water supply. I just don't feel well with that. This is very good for what it is. Oh, that's going to be a very, very narrow cavity here. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll do the trick just about fine. And our friends from the human empire have come... That's what I've been waiting for. That is hopefully finally the sand that we were we were requesting. So yeah, it'll take a while until this chamber is flooded, but eventually it will be flooded. There is uh, pretty much not uh, nothing that I see stopping this from happening. So uh, here's deer being slaughtered. Brilliant. Just what I was uh, doing this for. There we go, safety bridge. And let's move some food over to this place. So there's some stuff here. All right, they allow me to reorder things yet again. So we keep reordering bronze and iron. And obviously, I think I will stick to the sand orders, as this will help me a lot in getting get her what I need. And why the hell is there no button for repeat last year's order? I really don't understand. This is one of the things that really uh, 
disturbs me that we're not uh, that we don't have this little bit of quality of life here anyways so we got ourselves a selection of fine goods that we have ordered ah oh, and some of them we didn't order so yeah that sand comes in costy but i don't care at all it's just what we needed i don't need more meats as we have plenty of food but i will order and buy all the plants not the cheese, though. All right, let's go for the most interesting part. What's in the box? So, prepared wild boar kidney roast. Valley herb, fishy berry, giant raven lung, and wild boar kidney. Honestly, we've read worse. So, minced cabbage, yak's milk, rye beer, and pike kidney. All right, that might be even tasty. Honey badger liver, bush leaf, porcupine liver, and kangaroo sweetbread. I gotta say, we have had much worse uh, concoctions here. Cave lobster, hmm, giant monitor lizard spleen, cave fish, cave lobster, and cave lobster. Wow, it's a very lobstery meal. And even more lobster, cave fish, and cave fish and quarry leaf. Nice. So uh, we're uh, today not even selling two big atrocities. Uh, okay, I, I can't read all that. Obviously, we're selling away quite a big amount of uh, food. I got it. So the big problem is that this uh, pipeline here is very, very narrow. So it'll take a gosh darn long time for our cistern to fill. I underestimated that. I didn't see that one coming in all honesty. I mean, right now we could technically still wade through this thing with ease. So what I'm going to do instead though, is I'm going to get myself a little bit of a help at helping hand here. Or wait a sec, I can't give myself a helping hand, because if I do so, I will compromise the safety of this place. No! Dang it. Ah well, so, uh, yeah. That's not what I wanted to do, or not how I wanted to do. Ah well, I guess uh, we, we just gotta keep patient here. Eventually the cistern will fill. That's the best we can do. Ugh! But, as you can see here, our uh, our Bucket Brigade has done quite a tremendous job. They have successfully quenched all the fires here, and even overdid themselves. Good job! So, we can now safely drill a hole downstairs. And, obviously put floorboards on top of these. Also, with all the sand that I got, I can finally order myself as many uh, glass blocks as I can. Wait a sec, I, I... What did I do here? We do have more base here still, alright. So we're just going to put in the glass workshops here. I was just uh, very surprised that I didn't bring up any glass furnaces yet. There we go. So... No, you fools. Stop it. So, Ilral, the ghostly merchant, is haunting these places now. That's just typical. So, let's get ourselves the sand over here. Sandbags. And we link it to our big stockpile here. That should lead to the sand being piped there. Okay, so... It's gonna be very, very simple. We 
just want some blocks. There. And we'll repeat that as often and uh, much as we uh, as we possibly can. And that stuff will be just what we require. One petition outstanding. Yeah. What's going wrong here with the uh, with Guild Hall friends? Well, the, the art is not uh, fully there yet. Oh, well. She'll begin there. Okay. So, let's open up that. This, this is all proven to be safe cavities now. And we can also set up a new slab, I think. Wait a sec. Wasn't that? So. I think I just engraved the wrong thing. Here, Ilral, that's the one, no? But maybe, only maybe, there's just two ghosts by now. There are so many people dying lately that I see this as a quite a thing that might have happened. So, traders are packing up their things and going. Nah, I just engraved a wrong uh, slab. Whoopsie daisy. Yeah, now they uh, don't have it uh, designated. Uh, they, now they're carrying it around. Yeah, yeah, the usuals. So what I really, really um, see with quite some uh, fear is the constant low of drink in this uh, fortress. I mean, I don't have enough stills. That is one thing that we need to change. One still is never enough. But my farming is also quite horrible. But I mean, the good part is we can by now get ourselves some water. There's a well. We can now irrigate whatever we want to. Oh shoot, I didn't expect it to go like that. So, in the nutshell, we now need to wait until the water pressure, the measly peasily water pressure over here, has managed to, uh, well, get the job done here. Pretty much that. So let's see, can we can we do some geoengineering to help out the task, hey? Let's see. Because I mean this is uh, frankly said horrible. So let's see if we can't do something about this misery. Very simple procedure, we're just gonna widen the corridor. And, uh, oh, there's another deer ending in my, uh, in my trap corridor. We're just going to widen the corridor the water can float through. And we're also going to make it on a, uh, safe, in, in a safe way. So there will be no way for undergrounders to crawl into my fort. Ah! The finickiness of that slap placement is annoying me. There we go. So. We need to operate at many fronts here. 
So there's the water table. Alert. Ah, ghost has been put to rest. Good stuff. So we're we're going to widen this whole thing here. But at the same time, this place here will be no longer safe once we're done with it. So, no people got tracked this season. Can't say that I'm particularly sad about that. This place is just brimming with people, and I'm very happy if we get a uh, if we get a break for once. All right. So, very very simple procedure. And quite uh, dangerous for the rest of the Ford, in all honesty. But very, very effective at what uh, we're uh, we're doing here. So, are these idiots uh, drowning there? I really don't hope so. So, please tell me that you idiots are going to get out of there somehow. But uh, it's looking good. And we've achieved what I wanted to achieve, except for this breaker here still standing in the way. So... We might need to get to the uh, bottom of affairs like that. Yeah, that should work. That's a crazy thing that I'm doing here. Not gonna lie. But it'll work. The thing about miners. Miners are agile. Unlike warriors, they can pretty easily crawl back upstairs if the water torrent isn't too harsh because they're uh, not carrying any heavy armor that slows them down or hinders them. So what we effectively did here was, uh, well, pretty much increasing the water throughput of the system. I think I should have uh, done a better job in terms of um, stringing up the commands. Like, uh, there were a few uh, boulders up in the ocean here that I could have avoided, but uh, at the end of the day, there's still more water flowing through than before, so I count that as a success. It'll definitely help me at least to get this chamber filled faster. That's one thing that I'm absolutely sure about, and thus this mission was full-on success. Speaking about full-on successes, we also have access to adamantine at this spot. Isn't that nice? So... Just carving away the pieces of rock that are guaranteed to be safe. So here we don't really know what's happening. We can't look from above. This could be dangerous, this could be not dangerous, we don't know. So we don't excavate there. We will excavate here, though, and uh, clear out that little uh, pocket of magma there. So the hormy, hor, hoary marmot is also dying here. So, yeah. Stuff keeps dying at my doorstep. But at least we can eat the stuff that keeps dying at my doorstep. So things aren't that bad. We also now have a debatable source of fresh water which I will fill up with, via, via bucketeering. This is not really the most elegant way of doing things, but sometimes you just have to, to go with what you got, eh? So I see a way to success, so I'm going to follow it. Let's open up this cavity here in bet uh, right there, and then it's sadly pretty much time to say goodbye yet again for today. So, we had a pretty good run, that's uh, for sure. I hope you guys don't mind me resolving that problem like this, because I really don't know any other resolution than that. Let me know if you know one other resolution rather than just destroying the object in the door. 
buy a DF hack, I would be very, very inclined. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for being around. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and check out the description box brim filled with goodies. There's also links to support in the channel and I'd be very, very happy if you'd followed them. That all being said, a big, big thanks to all the supporters and a big, big thanks to you for watching this video up until the very end. See you all next time. Bye-bye.